Hey guys, it's been a while, but we're in the colony and um, the rabbits are running around and I've done a lot of changes in here. So I thought I'd show it to you guys, uh, give you kind of a tour of what it's looking like and some of the projects I still want to do. Um, but we'll see if we get to it. Hi guys, stop nibbling at my toes. Um, but we'll go ahead and get to some of the tour today and show you what the colony is kind of looking like and what we have planned for it. Sorry, I got a chicken trying to come in over here. Uh, <laughs> they try and get into the rabbit colony sometimes. Anyway, um, so let me just get to it and show you guys around a little. So these guys are all in here right now. Um, I'm not planning on keeping all of them. I'm probably still going to get rid of one or two. That one over in the back corner, that one here. That was never meant to be a holdback. See, there's the chicken over in here. She keeps looking at ways of trying to hop the fence right here. Okay. I need to get some food. The sun's right behind me. All right, guys, come on, move. Toes. Don't want to step on anyone. <laughs> All right, let's go to the other bowl. How about we try the other bowl too? See, whichever one I do first is where they usually go. Because they're silly. Uh, Poppy and Harley are two of my older breeders and they're really good. I was thinking about getting rid of them, but they haven't actually started to have lower numbers yet. So I actually want to keep them for a while because they're good and I and I know that they do well in colony and have little to no issues. Harley was actually the first Harlequin I ever bred and yeah, she, I just, she's got a special place in my heart. So she's, she's staying for at least a while longer. Okay. Okay. So let's just go over who we've got in the colony right now. Um, Sam and his daughter are almost entirely impossible to, to tell um, apart. One has more red on the side than the other. Um, so there's those two. Um, this is Chestnut and that's Hazel. They're newer. Um, so we got those from a local breeder that keeps their, um, their rabbits outside. So that works really good. Um, basically, I always want to have rabbits that are acclimated to our climate as much as possible. The, the animals that are raised in situations um, that have high biosecurity is what a lot of people call it. They tend to have really low immune systems and so they don't tend to do all that well, in my opinion. So at least in my situations, they don't do well. I'm sure they do really well in their high biosecurity you know, barns and air conditioner controlled, all of that. But the minute you take them out of those situations, they don't do so well. So I like to get animals from uh, people who keep their animals outside. And particularly if they're from my climate, those are the best. Okay. Yeah, that, that one's Sam. Let's see. Yeah, that one's Sam. This is his daughter. Uh, Sam was actually uh, from a local breeder and um, he's a half Californian, half Champagne to Argent. Um, this brown Rex here and her, those are from a local breeder that um, keeps outside but undercover. So they do pretty well here. Um, she, this one here, this Harlequin Rex was born here last season. She was my only Rex holdback. And let's see. Uh, unfortunately, Nori, uh, I had to put her down. She did not do so well after all the smoke and the fires um, and the heat. She was just not doing well. I ended up putting her down. Um, she just did not acclimate. I mean, she's she was raised in my colony. She was the first rabbit that was raised here in probably about two years that I actually had to put down um, because of just not flourishing. She was just struggling. 
which is sad because Nori was one of my favorites. But I'm starting to notice that wrecks tend to be a little more difficult, but they are highly bred for show and fur and all of that. I'm noticing that the New Zealands and my mix mutts tend to do much better. So, either which way on that, um, we currently have 11 in here right now, and that's a little much for me. I'm thinking I might want to get down to 10 or 9, so that would be 8 females and 1 buck, or 9 females and 1 buck. This one here is not one that I planned on keeping. Um, I caught her once, I checked her gender, and went, oh, okay, she's fine. I actually would prefer to get rid of a grow out buck. So I put her back and picked a buck that we used for food. And then I never caught her again. And um, she's, she's a tricky little thing. At some point I will go through and pull her out, but right now I'm not too worried about it. All right, let's start over here. This area here had been a pen of its own because originally we built this whole pen it started it went along this little fence line on the ground here and over here and then came back here where this fence line is and then we added on over like a there's a fence line right here that goes to that pole and then goes to the back wall that was the second add-on the third add-on was from this corner all the way down here. And then we added this on. And this was its own pen for a while. But I decided because this is the north facing side of the shed, that wasn't working well because in the summer the heat or the sun hits over here. Like the sun goes this way here. So um, in the winter, the sun's on the other side of the shed. And then in the summer, it's over here. So it would get really, really hot here during the summer and really cold here during the winter. So that was not working well. So we got rid of this pin by itself because that while they will use over here as they want to, I'd like to them to be able to get out of over here if they don't want to be in the cold or they don't want to be in the sun. So I've got a nest box here and a nest box here. This is a little play area over here and I've been toying around with the idea of building a nest box area back over here. So this whole area back here behind the shed, from here to here. I'm just, I don't know what I want to do over here yet. If you have any ideas, please put them down in the comments below. But let's see. So we've got this little play area here um, with the ramps and there is a nest underground right here this is an old roof piece from an old hutch um, i just put that there it gives them a little place to hide against the wall there if they want they run through over there all the time um it gives them a little shade and then cars And then we've got the island, is what I call this. Um, it's just a, basically a playground. They can go under this roofed piece. Um, they can jump through the tires. They can run up the ramps. The kits can run through these um, cinder blocks uh, when they're on their sides like this. And they can go all the way through under there. There's some tubes, some drainage tubes like right there. And over here we have two deck boxes that have holes drilled in them. Um, there's those pieces of wood that are leaned against it to keep the wind from just going right into the nest or into those boxes. Let me show you. So over here, underneath this little, you know, shade cloth 
tarp thing we have, um, I have two deck boxes. The gray one on the left over there has two holes. I apologize for the neighbors if you can hear them. Um, we've got a daycare right next door at this point. And um, they're adorable kids and really sweet. It's just they do get a little loud, but I can't complain with Merlin. Merlin gets very loud. Um, anyway, so I've got the two deck boxes. The one on the left has two holes in it and the one on the right has one. I use those pieces of wood there to keep the wind and the rain from, you know, just blowing right in and causing those to just be wind, wind tunnels in there. But let's go ahead and I'll show you what I've got inside there. Hey, you wanna hang out back there? Okay. So I've got these, I actually have three of them. There's one in the tub over to my left, but they actually have lips on them right here. And they're a little, they're like 16 inches tall. Um, and they, you know, they should work pretty well. I'm hoping that they like them and that this lip here keeps the kits inside. I don't know if it will, but I figure they're more likely to have litters in these than they are on the ground by themselves in here. So either way, this gives them a lot of space to get out of the rain and the wind if they want. But then there's this, I just put this like this so the wind doesn't just blow right in here. But it works. And then back here I have two totes. And I put these old hutch walls so I don't like to throw anything away. And drainage tubes that go into the totes. I think. Oh, she knocked this one off. <laughs> okay, so, and then I put stuff on top of them because there's holes on here. Let's see. <laughs> All right, guys, go back to sleep. I'm sorry. So, yeah, there's that. But this is the way the colony is looking right now. Here pretty soon, we'll be removing these uh, waterers. We don't use those during winter, just during summer. And then we just keep using the big water, rubber, plastic bowls during the winter. They're easy to kick out. So, let's see, what else? It's a mess over here right now because I had to take all the fencing down, but originally, there was fencing that went from here to here, and that's where I took that out. And then there was fencing here, all the way to the back wall that was dividing here, and then came up to here. And that's the way it was the last time I did a tour. But I took all that out to make it more accessible. So let me know what you guys think. I'm planning on moving this mulberry because I don't like the space it's in um, now that everything's been moved around. I'm gonna dig this one up, maybe put a bush over here, thinking like an autumn olive or something maybe. And then thinking I'm gonna put it over here. So I'll have a mulberry tree over here that um, will help feed the rabbits and also give shade. So thinking it's probably going to be somewhere around over here, but I want to be able to put my shade cloth up too. I don't know, lots to think of, but I'm not going to be moving that until it's dormant in the winter. And I need to root whatever I'm going to put out in here. Just have to put something that the rabbits can eat if they do get a hold of it. Ours. Ugh. 
Remember, I'm urban and we're on one fifth of an acre and my camera's sliding down. I need a new tripod. Ah. Let's try this. Okay, so remember guys, I am on one fifth of an acre and I'm in central Oregon, high altitude desert. We're in gardening zone, USDA gardening zone six. Um, and well, we have a very short season here. So this is one of the reasons I tend to focus on animals that like the cold or do fine in the cold. Rabbits really don't like the heat. They don't do well above 85 degrees. Um, they really have to acclimate to it, which is one of the reasons I don't like getting animals that are raised in um, high biosecurity areas, like with, you know, air conditioning and heating and no wind, no sun, don't see the ground ever. Those are the things that I try and avoid. Um, though honestly, there are some animals that I have to get that are like that. Um, they're just more difficult to acclimate. Um, but what it comes down to is I raise in colony because I believe the animals have a better life than they do in cages. It's not something that everybody can do. So to keep that in mind, not everybody's situation and not everybody's location is going to work well for a uh, colony, especially if you're in an area that floods. Um, I would never do this in an area that floods or gets a ton of rain unless I was going to give them a more covered spots. Even here, because of the snow, um, I have to work something out in winter to help, you know, keep them from completely getting, you know, snowed in. But I honestly don't seem to mind at all. They love digging tunnels in the snow. It seems like they, they had the best time doing that. I mean, that's why they have all that fur, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. I hope you hit like and subscribe. Please follow me for more information on rabbits, bees, ducks, chickens, all kept in a small space urban setting. And I'll yak at you later. Bye.